So thank you, um, everybody, for joining us and, and making this event a real success. I'm actually very excited to be here. Uh, this is our second event, and, um, and it's been a resounding success. I heard yesterday from my team that, uh, that we actually crossed 6,000 registrations, uh, making this sort of pretty much the largest um, hosting event in, in all of Asia. Um, I'd like to thank everyone sort of um, that, that, you know, India's been full of enthusiastic people. Uh, it's really amazing to see the kind of audience. I mean, I, when I was the last, um, last Reset Club hosting summit also, it's, it's amazing to see the kind of, kind of excitement, the kind of audience, the kind of uh, enthusiasm that you guys have um, uh, in, in running your respective businesses and growing your respective businesses, et cetera. Um, you know, I'm going to start off uh, with, with my presentation and, you know, uh, sort of for shock value, uh, <laughs> uh, labeled the stop selling domains. Please don't stop selling domains, by the way. Uh, we expect you to continue selling more of them. But let me give you some perspective as to, you know, what my presentation is about. There are about close to 20 million software developers worldwide. 18.2 is what I sort of picked up from, um, from one of the online sources. And 2.75 million of those software developers are in India. So that's 15% of the world's software developers that are actually in this country, in, in, in India, right? Um, and let's look at this you know, in, in a slightly different way. I've taken sort of uh, um, three recognizable companies from, uh, from the Valley, for instance, here. Um, so you've got Apple, which you know, obviously everybody knows. They've got close to about 80,000 employees and a market cap of about uh, $443 billion. Then you've got Facebook, which just had about 5,000 odd employees has a market cap of about $100 billion. Um, and you've got Google, which is, you know, at 45,000 employees as a market cap for about um, $290 billion. And, you know, give or take, I, I took these numbers uh, some time ago. So, you know, some of these might have changed since then. Um, and so these are sort of three well-known product companies that exist in the Valley that, that develop, you know, brilliant products that many of us use, you know, almost on a daily basis. Um, let's, let's look at India. Um, you know, India's been more of a service-oriented economy. That's how we started out. Um, in, in, in sort of the IT industry, uh, and some of the big names in, in the last decade that we talk about, we talk about so the IT landscape is sort of TCS, which is, uh, which is about 270,000 odd employees with a market cap of about 61 billion. Um, there's Infosys with about 150,000 employees and a market cap of 26 billion. Um, and then Cognizant is another example, you know, 160,000 employees and a market cap of about 22 billion. Now, I don't want to sort of, you know, confuse you guys with sort of lots of numbers, etc. cetera. Uh, I'm just trying to make a simple point out here. Um, um, if you draw a comparison between, between sort of, you know, a service-oriented model where companies in India using sort of the, you know, 2.75 million software developers that we have in this country are building software for other people and providing services, et cetera, which has obviously contributed a lot to our economy and, and grown, um, grown the talent out here and, 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 and uh, uh, contributed to India as a whole. But, you know, if you look at it, a sort of a combined picture, uh, with about 600,000 employees, if you look at sort of the first column, uh, the three companies that I took as an example in India, with about 600,000 employees, they've generated value of about $109 billion. Um, you look at three companies in, in the U.S., in the Valley, that are product-oriented companies, you know, 130,000 employees, and they've generated a value of about $830 billion. Uh, and so if you do the math on a per-employee basis, you know, those three companies in the Valley, Apple, Facebook, and Google, have generated cumulatively about $6.4 million per employee, while the three companies, sort of the service-oriented companies in India, have generated about $182,000 per employee. So that's 35 times more value per person. And these are all software developers. There's no, you know, th nobody can sit and tell you out here that, you know, there's smarter people there versus here. In fact, there's a lot of Indians out there sitting and doing a, uh, a lot of the work um, anyways. Uh, but same, same people, same kind of talent of building software, developing, you know, software, et cetera, is that one set of individuals are being used to develop, you know, products that can serve you know, a mass market, you know, sell, sell these products to sort of millions and millions of users, or uh, in some cases, even billions of users worldwide. And, you know, the other model with sort of same talent is sort of a service-oriented model where you're, where you're doing, well, nothing but sort of providing software, software services to, um, to customers. Uh, and so really, my theme is, you know, 35 times more value generated. So, you know, stop just selling domains. Please do continue selling them. But, you know, stop just selling domains and, and let's start building products. I think India as, a, as an economy now needs to move into that next phase where we're, where we're doing the innovation. Where we're not sitting and building software for other people and other companies, but we're sitting and innovating, creating, you know, brilliant software and brilliant products for, for consumers, not just in our country, but outside. And the time is sort of right, you know, um, uh, taking sort of a, a page from Manish's presentation, we're at the cusp of phenomenal growth when it comes to internet penetration. You know, India as a country will grow 
by a magnitude of 3x in the next three to four years when it comes to internet penetration. Uh, you know, um, it's a sort of a difference in mindset in terms of when, when you've got sort of, let's say, you know, five or 10% of the entire country connected to the internet, and you're trying to go out there and build an app or build a software or build a product, et cetera, the kind of market share you can address versus, you know, three years from now, 50% or, well, between 30 to 40% of the country is going to be connected to the internet, and the potential of your products and your applications and your software is, is going to multiply three to four times. Uh, and so really, now I'm going to start the key message of my, uh, my presentation, is that, you know, I, in DirectEye, we've, we've, we've done a lot of things. You know, we've built tons of products with Reseller Club, with Big Rock, with, uh, with Logic Boxes. We also sort of uh, operate in the messaging space, the contextual advertising space, et cetera. And I want to spend um, the next 10, 15 minutes um, to share with you, you know, a few key lessons that we've learned along the way um, in, in terms of what it takes to create, you know, successful and, and, and awesome products, right? Um, and so, you know, what does it take, you know, typically when you ask someone, you know, what does it take to build a successful product? A lot of entrepreneurs amongst you uh, probably have sort of built some successful products or built failed products and, and, uh, uh, and started off a sort of similar notion. I, I started off my, uh, my career and my, um, um, you know, um, sort of path building products, uh, uh, coding myself back in, uh, uh, in 1998. Uh, and really, you know, most of us when we're ideators, when we're innovators, we sort of start off by thinking that the ingredients are, you know, you have to have a great idea. As an entrepreneur, I've had many ideas and, and I'm always very passionate about my idea. I love my idea. It's like, oh, wow, this is going to change the world. I'm going to build this product and everybody in the world is going to want it because it really solves like, you know, brilliant problems for everybody, et cetera, right? You need great engineering. Um, so you need sort of good coders, good software developers, um, and you need, you know, good design. You know, these days, in fact, even more so than used to uh, matter before, uh, you need sort of an outstanding design, user experience, et cetera, right? Um, and so typically you'll think in a product development process, this is the, the basic key ingredients that you need to be successful. That's what, you know, I started out thinking when I started building my first set of products and services. Like, I've got a great idea, you know, I can code and write some software and create, create some cool stuff, and I, you know, I've got some good designers, et cetera, let me create, let me build a, in a, you know, a brilliant product, right? And the question is, is this all it takes, uh, these three ingredients? Uh, so you know, I'll give you a couple of examples of how many guys you know, uh, have heard of this, uh, this company called Path. Uh, you know, they, they had a great idea, um, uh, have a great idea in some sense, um, uh, according to them. Uh, they're building what's sort of the anti-social network. They started out this concept that you know, Facebook's becoming too big, uh, too crowded, uh, which I guess many of us sometimes feel. Uh, so they, they started out with a concept of social networks that said that, that you can have a maximum of sort of 100 friends. You're expected to have you know, really close people uh, in your network and only close people in your network, et cetera. Um, great founders, you know, people from Facebook, Apple, you know, Napster fame. Um, you know, pretty good design. I really like their sort of slick mobile application, you know, beautiful looking, extremely simple to use, et cetera. Um, and it's been three years. They have only six million users. They've changed their idea and vision sort of three times um, over, um, you know, and, and still haven't really figured out what exactly do they stand for. Now they're sort of more into messaging. Uh, along with their sort of social network piece, right? Um, how many of you guys remember Google Wave, uh, which created a huge splash when it launched in, in Google I.O.? Um, I remember seeing the video, you know, two, three times myself, being really excited, thinking about how it's going to change the world because, you know, it was a great idea. It was pretty much everything in the kitchen sink thrown in, right? Email, IM, blogging, comments, forums, social network, video, voice, share, you know, collaboration, content sharing. It was everything in one sort of software um, and, and looked amazing. The demos were like outstanding. You know, was, the, I think the, you know, the, the longest possible applause in a presentation that I've seen on, on, on Google I.O. Brilliant founders, the same team that actually created Google Maps uh, that was responsible for, uh, for Google Wave. Um, you know, obviously great engineering. You know, they had all these cool features where you could play back uh, so if, if there's a message thread, you know, you can actually play it back in sort of like a, you know, step-by-step -step format that tells you who sent the first message, then what was the next set of, you know, characters typed, et cetera. Some really cool, you know, technology features, et cetera. And as everybody's aware, you know, they, they announced in, in 2010 the launch of, of Wave, and they shut it down in, in, in 2012. Um, and so, you know, what does it, what, what, what really happened out here? You know, does, does a great idea, you know, all entrepreneurs or all visionaries sort of think they have a brilliant idea. So does a great idea awesome engineering and, and great design sort of always translate to a successful product, and, and you know, maybe not. You know, in, in many cases, you'll find that's not, really the, uh, that's not really the case. And so that brings me to sort of lesson number one. I would say this is by far the most important lesson that, that we've learned with several failures under our belt over time, uh, is that many times entrepreneurs will get caught up in their idea and not listen to their, their consumers and their, and their uh, customers, right? Learn and understand people and their goals and talk to them early and talk to them often. And this is such a simple piece of advice, right, but so powerful 
when you're talking about sort of building a building a successful product that you know you, you need to realize that you know we've learned this the hard way in, 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 in you know in many circumstances people don't care about your great idea they don't care about your awesome design they don't really care about your you know brilliant engineering prowess and the awesome code that you've written etc uh, nobody went out there and said oh I'm using this app because it has a brilliant animated button you know that's not really why people are using your applications or using your software people don't care about an app they care about what the app solves and there's sort of a critical difference between the two. Don't get caught up with your app. You know, figure out what exactly is it solving for end users, for consumers. People have jobs to be done. You know, they don't want to visit Amazon. They want to buy a book. And there's a difference. They don't want to, you know, use Facebook. They want to keep in touch with friends. And there's a difference. And, and when you get that, if people don't care about your app or your website, in fact, if they could solve all their problems without using your app or your website, they would actually prefer doing that. Right? So, you know, did Path ask people that, is this what you want? Do you want an anti-social network? Uh, do you want, you know, these kind of features, et cetera? Or did, or did Google ask people that, they, do they want to combine all their communication into this one monolithic software and, and you know, provide it using one single interface, et cetera? Did, did they do that? You know, they probably didn't. And that's one of the big reasons why, um, why they sort of, you know, they failed in, in some sense or the other, right? So talk to people and solve their problems. And this is really the key way to build a product. Talk to people and solve their problems. Whenever you're building a product, that's what you're doing. You're solving people's problems. Uh, the next lesson, lesson number two, um, that I want to talk about is, is fail early and fail often. Um, and this is sort of counterintuitive. You know, people want to be successful. People want to put a product out there and, and get millions of users right out of the bat. And that's what people think, right? I'll put something out there and I'll get millions of users, right? Entrepreneurs get caught up in that sort of uh, euphoria of success. And what, what most people don't realize is that you actually need to go through a lot of failures to succeed. And so if you, you need to go through a lot of failures, you might as well fail early and fail as fast and as rapidly and as often as you can to become successful, you know? Um, let's look at sort of Microsoft RT. Uh, for instance, right? Microsoft built the sort of whole, you know, enter the tablet game and hasn't really su su been successful at it uh, uh, in the last few years. And they spent a lot of time creating this sort of tablet and surface, and they actually have a sort of uh, pow uh, you know, a powered version, uh, a sort of premium version of it that, that can run both Windows, existing Windows and Windows RT, uh, so that you can sort of switch between them and, and, and so on and so forth. And, and they, they thought, like, look, we're Microsoft, we've already got a channel out there, people are already using Windows, we'll come up with a tablet. We'll spend years of research and you know time behind it, and people will buy it. And you know eventually they took a 900 million dollar write-off um, on all their Surface inventory. Or you know another another product is is this product called Nokia Engage, which uh, again you know has been several years since it so it was out in the market. Uh, which, which sort of they built a phone which was meant to be you know an awesome phone and an awesome gaming device, and it turned out to be you know mediocre at both. Right? It wasn't a great phone because you know the form factor wasn't because the form factor was built for gaming. It wasn't perfect for you know making calls. And so it, wasn't, it didn't turn out to be a great phone, it didn't turn out to be a great gaming device. And you know, both these companies, and many companies, by the way, spend millions of dollars or you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars or whatever you know, your resources towards building a product, taking a long time to build it, on the assumption that when you put it out there in the market, it's going to be successful. And that's not really the way, you know, that's not really the way to build successful products. What you want to do is ship fast and fail early. Don't fall in love with your ideas. Don't think that I've got these brilliant you know, 20 features that I want to build, and this, this product, all the stuff that's out in the market, has only five features. My product has 20. Uh, I'm going to build all 20, and then I'm going to ship. I'm going to only ship after I finish building all 20 uh, because, you know, wow, this, this stuff together is sort of really awesome, right? That's what, in some sense, Wave did. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build a single interface that combines, you know, everything in the world and then put it out there for the world to see. Um, and, you know, what if suddenly you realize after you put those 20 features out there that nobody really wants it? So, you know, ship fast. You know, you build. You know, forget even the five that's out there in the market. You build three features, ship it. Don't expect a million users in your first launch. Get a thousand users. See what those thousand users do with your product, and you'll realize your failures in those three features. You'll see what didn't work. Get that feedback. Improve those while building your fourth, fifth, and sixth feature, right? So ship fast and, and fail early. And this is sort of a theme that many softwares have been following these days, right? You know, gone are the days when you had to wait for a year and a half to, um, to, you know, to get the next version of Internet Explorer, right? You know, Chrome now has sort of almost six-week release windows. Every six weeks, you get sort of new releases. Facebook keeps adding features consistently to their platform without you even knowing it on a constant basis. Uh, so that's the best way to design, design software, you know? In fact, it's interesting to note that the same team that founded Wave 
was responsible for maps, which was a resounding success. And look at the difference in philosophy. Maps didn't start out by saying, I'm going to build everything in the world. I'm not going to launch the product. I'm going to take every country's map in the world, every single feature. I don't want that you know, crappy interface. I'm going to build a really smooth interface, et cetera. I'm going to build mobile apps and desktop apps and all of it together, and then finally ship, right? Uh, Maps actually was built as an incremental sort of 20% product where, where people said, look, I want to, it, it was in fact built to solve specific problems. There were certain problems they picked up, a small number, they solved those, they put, put it out there. The first version of Maps, in comparison to today, if you, if you think about it back then, was pretty crappy. It didn't, you know, it didn't have Ajax stuff, uh, you know, working as smoothly, it didn't, it didn't really load that well, etc. But it solved some problems for some people. It didn't get, you know, hundreds of millions of users when it launched, but it, it started gathering a fan following slowly but surely, and kept incrementally adding, um, and incrementally sort of resulting in success. You know, so getting something done, is better than getting something perfect. In this world, you know, now when you're looking at sort of developing software, get something done, put it out there, get your feedback, and then sort of continue to, uh, continue to iterate. So that's sort of lesson number two, fail early um, and fail often, right? Uh, lesson number three I'll talk about is, um, um, so one of, the, one of the things that I want, uh, so this is sort of my, my final uh, set of slides. Uh, one of the interesting things that I guess you know, all of us think about sometimes is that you know, in, in the entire world out there, why is it that a large number of successful products in our space uh, come from that same 40 square mile radius which you know, we call the Silicon Valley? Why is, it that, you know, we, you know, why is it that no other country has been able to produce that kind of a microcosm of sort of success when it comes to you know, Web 2.0 products and, and, and products that are used sort of worldwide, right? Um, and you know, I, I had the good fortune to sort of attend a bunch of presentations in the Valley uh, conducted by a bunch of you know, folks who've sort of been there for quite some time and, uh, and are in the thick of things, et cetera. And, and in fact, this topic came up for debate. The why is it that the Silicon Valley is so successful? And you know, people were throwing out stuff like, oh, it's got access to great talent. You know, they've got brilliant universities around that area, um, great engineering, great tech, tech talent, et cetera. Uh, it's got access to tons of capital. You know, there's lots of venture capital out there. There's lots of firms that sort of willing to fund ideas and things like that. Uh, and so these are all sort of, you know, ideas that were thrown about, but really, you know, and the, so this, the professor was giving the presentation said, all of these factors are actually not as important as the one factor that is a culture in the valley that failure is never final, right? People in the valley, people um, in, 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 in Silicon Valley, sort of, there'll, there'll be entrepreneurs you'll find who'll, who'll start their first startup, fail, start their second one, fail, start their third one, fail, and they'll still continue at it. They'll come up with a fourth product, a fifth product, uh, and there'll be still people willing to fund them. People don't judge out there in the, in the, with the notion that, oh, look, you know, first, you know, first, of, uh, first few of his products fail. In fact, failure is what results in the experience to be able to sort of create the next success. And that culture is so important to create a, you know, a thriving product-based economy. In, in, in a product-based world, there will be a sizable number of failures to create certain resounding successes. And so we need to sort of imbibe that culture that failure is never final, you know? This is a famous quote from sort of Edison when he was inventing the light bulb and, you know, he tried like, the different stories people talk about, hundreds of filaments or thousands of filaments or whatever. But, you know, he, he had tried sort of 700 plus filaments until then and nothing had worked. And, you know, his point was, I have not failed 700 times. I have not failed even once. I've succeeded in proving that there are 700 ways which will not work, right? So when I've eliminated all the ways that won't work, then, you know, I will find the way that will work. Um, and so failure is never final. Don't give up. So. Um, that's pretty much what I've got uh, for you guys today. You know, three lessons that, that, that we've learned um, across the last 14, 15 years building products at DirectEye, um, Reseller Club, you know, Big Rock, um, et cetera. Um, you know, lesson one, talk to people and solve their problems. Lesson number two is, you know, fail early and, and, and fail often. Um, and lesson number three is, is uh, don't give up. Um, and that's, that's basically it. Thank you.